Universal Let's Studios? Let's get back to Universal Studio. Okay. Um, which, looking at the map, it's actually very small. Yeah. Uh, so theme parks are an interesting thing. I'm, I've, I've always been fascinated with them, especially growing up in uh, Southern California, you know, a few minutes from Disneyland and having worked at Disneyland for a summer job in high school. Um, and then obviously us and being an architecture, it's an interesting, uh, from an architect's perspective, and Universal Studios was a joy to go to, one, because of the company, but also it's a theme park. And it's in a lot of ways very different than Disneyland. It's very different. Uh, I have, I can't even remember last time I went to Disneyland. was the, probably, the, the, yeah. I don't know, I was a teenager, earlier than a teenager, maybe. <clears throat> but also you went to the French Disneyland, let's be clear about this. You didn't actually go to yeah, Disneyland. Yeah, but we have a bigger to... castle than the one you have in LA, so mm, I keep not... saying that. Like... Well, <laughs> si size is not everything. Sometimes it's about well, sometimes size is everything. <laughs> sometimes it's about proportion. Fatter castle, uh, more satisfying. I think it's a way to you know, hide that the size is not that <laughs> big. <laughs> um, I, I think I'd mentioned this on a recording that's going to come out soon, but... Uh, speaking of proportion and stuff, like uh, one of our colleagues had gone to Disney World in Florida and they were comparing the main street, which is the first quote unquote street you 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 go down as you after you enter the park of Disneyland. So the main street in Disneyland, uh, Disney World in Florida is built at one to one scale. So the buildings are like normal sized in proportion. Whereas the main street in Disneyland in Anaheim, the original Disneyland, is some bizarre shrunk down version. It's like two thirds scale or three quarters scale. But when you walk down Main Street, Disneyland, Anaheim, it feels really nice and it has this almost magical quality to it because of that scale. When you go to the one in Florida and it's built at an actual normal scale, it falls apart and it doesn't feel special. It just feels like um, you're walking down some street with nice buildings as opposed to uh, being in this kind of utopian environment it's interesting that you brought up the idea of the scale at which the buildings in theme park are built because i didn't realize when we went to universal we did the harry potter part and <clears throat> it's true if you think about it if they're going to build just the, the the houses that were in that little pedestrian streets as one to one scale it they would be work. fairly big <clears throat> they would be yeah. fairly big homes yeah. um and that's what makes it cute. And I guess maybe they do that too because most of the public are kids. So the scale needs to, you know, mm -hmm. somehow reflect to them a little better. I suppose that's it. But it, it's, it's not like the, the special quality of the place is lost on adults because it no longer fits them, you know. I'm not, I'm not sure. No, it's not lost it, on adults either. I mean, it works still. It makes you feel like you're in a little cute, cute world. Right, right. It actually makes you feel like you're in a different universe, a, a new land, a Disneyland. <laughs> like, you know, when you go to uh, downtown Disney, which we've talked about before, um, everything is, is built at one-to-one -one scale because they're functioning, you know, restaurants and shops and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So even if they have things that, uh, certain architectures that are themed and heavily covered in decoration and, and Disney-fied, right, um, sculpturally, it it doesn't it just it just feels like an outdoor mall still it doesn't feel like you you've actually entered a new place a new dimension i wonder how the building code works for theme park that is a good question because um uh, that, that thought occurred to me during uh, I fucking forgot. <laughs> one of the times when we were in Universal Studios. They, they must be pretty lax. Like, you know, just looking at the construction details of, you know, facades and things, I'm yeah. like, okay, I mean, this doesn't look like it will work really. But also in terms of, I don't know, uh, fireproofing, uh, insulation, you know, stairs, access, even egress. Like we did the little uh, ride in the school, um, at the Harry Potter world. And you you kind of, when you get in line, you, you know, go out from the outside and you finally get in the school building. And then it's kind of a serpentine uh, line, yeah. right? That that yeah. goes through with metal handrail on each side. Oh, that was the moment, yeah. And I was like, hey, let's think about this a minute. If there is a fire or something and we all need to get out as soon as possible, where is the exit? How do I get out from, you know, those handrails everywhere? Where is the nearest door? Right. It kind of frightened me for a little bit. I was like, uh, I'm actually legitimately concerned right now, yeah. especially if the line is filled with people. When we went, it was pretty quiet. But if you have hundreds of people, 
How does that even work? I don't know. The same thought occurred to me in, when we're writing a line because it's super dark also. It was really, uh, really, really dark. Really, really dark. Um, but anyway, so theme parks, uh, I don't know. I really enjoy them. It'd be, it'd be fun to design a portion of a theme park, I think. Um, but one of the big differences between Disneyland and Universal Studios is that in... Okay, first of all, everyone should be familiar with Disneyland. <laughs> But if they aren't, um, the park is separated into different uh, big lands, actually. Um, so there's like Tomorrowland, which is a future theme. There's Frontier la uh, Land. There is uh, Toontown, which is a kid's area. There is... Oh, how Ad embarrassing. I'm forgetting things. Adventure? So the French Quarter, Adventureland. So... Soon, soon to be the Star Wars? Uh, no, Adventureland won't, won't become Star Wars. Star Wars probably takes place in Tomorrowland, I would imagine. No, no, it's a new it's a new thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. But, anyway, but, there but soon there will be... Uh, there soon will be. But most of the their lands are not specific to one character or one franchise or one uh yeah franchise would be it's the a word theme. it's a theme whereas in universal studios all of their districts or lands or whatever you want to call them are based around a specific franchise so you have <clears throat> more or less right so you have a, less, yeah. an, an entire era that's dedicated to the simpsons that's all in like simpsons universe you have one that is harry potter as we've mentioned you have one that is uh well, I guess there's a the, the Despicable Me kind is that of operates. Dream, huh? that, DreamWorks is, is the. That DreamWorks? Is DreamWorks the, is Universal? Yeah. yeah. So is that DreamWorks? DreamWorks, so, yeah. yeah. Not Pixar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but so each of the districts you go to are are modeled entirely around a, a defined universe, you know, by, by a franchise. And that makes it really interesting. So you're not entering some vague frontier land. You're actually entering like Harry Potter universe. But it's kind of weird. Like, you know, you see like Marge Simpson walking into the Harry Potter world and you're like, uh, <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, when did you see that? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, but it could happen, right? I mean, well, yeah. we saw, um, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, you see the Simpsons walking around, you see Harry Potter people, you see Marilyn Monroe. Uh, this week about you see yeah. minions. It's like it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool because it's also um, movies and references that are not only um, for kids. Yeah. So it's kind of it brings the kids and the adults together in a way. I feel like Disney is a lot kid oriented. Uh, Maybe not so much anymore. I've I've it's I haven't been there. Anymore. Yeah, ma maybe more so than Universal. I mean, I guess this kind of would be obvious to say, but Universal Studios, the theme park, is is much more interesting if you're a big movie buff. Yeah. Right. Disneyland is interesting if you're into movies, but you don't need to be interested in movies at all to have fun at Disneyland. It doesn't really matter as yeah. much. Like Universal relies entirely about entirely on your knowledge about movies. You know, almost. Um, but so the first uh, land or district that we went to was the Harry Potter one, which wait, I was actually quite wait, excited. Wait, so what did you think of it? I, I was a little bit disappointed. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> because so Harry Potter, the, that that district is basically just one uh, street with a few kind of minor offshoots peeling off of it. Right. Yeah, and that main that. Huh? Some little alleyways. Some little alleyways, um, like Diagon Alley, I think, is, is maybe one of them. But the main strip is Hogsmeade, which is, uh, you know, basically a downtown area in the Potter universe. Um, and then you end up at a castle. So, but I thought that strip was going to be longer. Me too. Um, but actually, I have more problem with its width. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's girth, if you will. Um, it was too wide. Yeah. Which I understand they might need to do to accommodate like summer crowds if there's like a ton of people. But if you've seen Harry Potter the movie and you see images of Hogsmeade, you know, when he's going to get his wand in the first movie and stuff like that, like the the different buildings are. are it's pretty, pretty close to each yeah. other, right? I mean, at, at any medieval town anywhere in Europe, it's pretty tight. Yeah, streets were pretty tight, and or it, at least the width of like you know a, a cart with a horse and be able to drive through, mm -hmm. but not really bigger than that. Yeah, so I think it was too wide, and and you know there is a magical relationship between the width of a street and the height of buildings from an urban design per, kind of you know perspective. If you're thinking more traditionally, right? There's a not magical per, uh, proportion that works generally and they were off it didn't it didn't make sense like the buildings were too short for the width of the street and in addition one of the things that makes hogsmeade so fascinating in the movie is that it's filled with eclectic stuff there's a lot of action and activity so when you're looking down the street you don't see 
one storefront or, or you know a clean series of storefronts it's like this thing this thing that thing that thing and they're all kind of leaping out at you right it's a much more dynamic experience whereas here um the storefronts were not nearly as varied as they needed to be they weren't as different as they needed to be they were not as varied and because i think a lot of the charms that comes from that place in the movie and the book is yeah. what's happening inside mm -hmm. you i was expecting that some of the spectacles or attraction would also happen in those little boutique spaces right yeah a few of them were closed so i don't know if they were closed always and you know staged to be a shop but never actually open or if they were closed the day we were in but the storefront was staged there was props and things like you could imagine the world behind right and then you probably had like a couple stores that were selling random harry potter candy or why not but i, w I was hoping that i don't know one store would have a bunch of owls or you know like things that would go up and down from the ceiling and but kind of look like a store but wasn't a fake, a fake store or something like that but yeah. not not really the wand shop might have been on that direction mm -hmm. um uh, you you could like go on a, a a separate line you had they had like two entrants you could go to actually buy wands if you wanted that were 55 dollars a piece for the cheapest ones for the cheapest ones which yeah. I'm like why would you buy a stick for 55 bucks if you want to buy newt commander's wand it's, I mean, it's insane <laughs> and on the and you could walk around in the back and and get in line to actually go and see how they pick the wand for people so there was a yeah. some kind of wizard in a small room in the dark that was you know picking the wand uh, which i thought was cute but i was kind of like yeah it, that that thing didn't work it, it was almost an amusement uh, event it's not a ride it's an event you you do wait in line for quite a bit then you get shuffled into um basically a, a vestibule right that's like a has a bunch of fake books or wands on the shelves and then you go through a hidden door then you enter another space and you all get crammed in there and then as you said one person goes through the it's, it's they copy the dialogue and everything from the scene when harry potter gets his wand yeah. um but it's like all of that procession and build up is not worth the 10 minutes you're in there just standing around watching some uh b-rated actress you know try to do her thing which she was she was decent for what she was doing but it's like not enough to, you know but to it was mostly standing in line. talking there was two boxes that moved in the wall yeah. and the light that like blinked and i was like okay it would have been fun if like they really went all out with you know well, stuff yeah. going bananas in there yeah. I mean, on the one hand, it's like, well, we're adults, so that's probably why we don't think it's maybe, that interesting. Maybe. But I'm telling you, when you go to Disneyland, they do a pretty good job of being more thematic uh, with with stuff. I think you're right. It was a missed opportunity with Hog, Hogsmeade that they didn't make use of all the storefronts in different ways. And let's assume that they... I mean, obviously, budget's always a problem, but let's just kind of forget that because it's not interesting to talk about that. Um, they should have done it up more, even if it was simple things like like with having things in the windows move or just make believe that they were ghosts or moving broom shadows. It, there wasn't enough of that stuff. Even the actors um, that were in those streets, you know, like we saw a few actors in different parts of of the park, you know, like fake dinosaurs at Jurassic Park that were scaring people and like attractions like that. But besides the three kids singing on the stage at mm -hmm. Harry Potter World, mm -hmm. there was, you know, they could have had a weird wizard walking around and scaring kids or, you know, try and just bring the magic of the book and the movie a little bit more to that part of the park. Um, it felt a little abandoned in a way. Uh, yeah, I agree. And even like I said, the architecture was just, they, they clearly had kind of one model or maybe two and they just repeated it. And it doesn't work if you're trying to create, recreate uh, that eclectic yeah. kind of yeah. scene. And the, and the people working there, it's funny because they, they have to pretend like they're wizards, which is not something you see in Disneyland. Like you have the, the, uh, the people who are work there who are called cast members, but they just work there. They're not pretending to be Buzz Lightyear or pretending to be wizards or ghosts or anything. They're just, they're just there to help you. Um, and then you have the actual people in costumes who are pretending to be Mulan or whoever it is. But in the case of the Harry Potter land, like the people at the cast register needed to pretend like they were wizards, people that were helping around and pretend like they're wizards. And it, it I don't know, <laughs> like I feel like either you have to do it really well or, or don't do it. 
they had a, a roller coaster and you guys went to do the roller coaster and, and mm. me and my nephew didn't so we like you know walked around go went check out the wands came back and they had like one of the rolling carts where they were selling stuff mm -hmm. and they were selling more wands i'm like okay harry potter besides butter beer and wands what else you got you know yeah they didn't yeah. they could have got a little bit more yeah. um and so they had a like, nice ones, you know, displayed on their cart and the two girls working wearing their wizard outfit and why not. And uh, my nephew was looking at them kind of, in, in, you know, intricated, like, oh, what is this? Do, do they actually do anything? So I was, I, I looked at the ladies working there and I was like, jokingly asking, oh, could you guys give us a demonstration of the ones? Right. Hoping that they would have some kind of trick that they could show kids, you know, to make them buy ones. And she was like, oh, no, we, we don't. But, uh, you know, if you go, like, somewhere down there, uh, you can see one. And I guess that was the one shop. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, do you have a map of the park otherwise? Because I, I don't have one on me. Like, And then, then you have kids who buy wands, right? And they're, like, teenagers. And yeah. they wear their cape and their hat and their thing. And they have the wands. So that's it. They're all, you know, ready to, to go to Harry Potter school. And they start like it's wheezing okay, around. Anyway, it's, it's called <laughs> what? First of all, it's called Hogwarts. <laughs> I think I think we do wizard stuff. I don't think you call it whizzing around. <laughs> but okay. Uh, I'm just gonna say whizzing okay, around. Okay. And so I, I, we walk by uh, the stores, and I see a kid like whizzing around with his <laughs> cape and wand. And I thought at first I thought he was just, he was just joking with his friend or brothers and sisters. No, the kid was dead serious trying to like lift something up or something and he like just kept trying and kept trying. How old was he? And I wanted to be like, hey, can anyone tell him this is not going to work? He's wasting his time. Was he, you know... Probably, uh, be, I don't know, between 10 and 14. That's... Okay, that's a I'm little like, bit old. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe he was, you know, on the spectrum, <clears throat> you know... Of being super weirdo? No, I mean, he had actually had a, a disability. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think no. he did. Okay. He didn't look like it, but um, yeah, Harry Potter let me down a little bit. You know, the other problem with the the places that they had in that main street was that the biggest ones seemed to be food related stuff, like restaurants and whatever kind of like tavern, like really dark. Um, but they were not really appealing from the outside like you kind of guess that that was a restaurant because it was stable and a couple of people were sitting outside but there was no activity coming from inside to the outside in hogsmeade no. i don't know you didn't remember seeing any well, i'm sure you didn't because you really had to kind of look inside and see what are was you sure on. that it was an actual yeah. people yeah, could yeah. go in there and eat you know what the candy shop was before the one shop there was kind of like an inner plaza yeah. uh -huh. a little bit where uh -huh. on the left of the on the right of the candy store, that was like a big Russian thing. <laughs> I would have never known. Yeah, fuck, I don't know. They needed to hire some better architects for that, for what happened there. And actually, that part of the park s started becoming more interesting at night. Mm -hmm. uh, when the sun came down and the lights were glowing and you... Because also, you know, you could kind of forget every reality that existed around yeah. it. Like, it was... It was even Much then better. it wasn't well lit enough mm -hmm. you know it, 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 um the 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 cool thing though is that they have the castle at the end of the road end of the street that's pretty cool and the castle of course is not done at, at actual scale it's a much smaller scale but however they do it it looks like you're seeing a full scale castle that's just you get, far like, away the perspective yeah. dramatic perspective it feels like you're looking at the actual castle it just happens to be you know, 500 feet away yeah. instead of yeah, right yeah, in front yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah. When it's right in front of you. That and uh, the fireplaces being super tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and then, so that was pretty, that part of the, of the park was pretty quiet. Yeah. And then we headed to the Simpson area. The Simpson area was so, so loud. <laughs> so loud. I mean with people or? No, with their TV, their music in the restaurants. It was like really intense, like headache intense, yeah. you know? It's a big part of the, of Universal Studios. It might be the biggest area actually that's dedicated to one thing. <clears throat> I wanted to get one of those giant donuts at the Simpsons. <laughs> The donuts were like what the size of somebody's head. They were big. It was insane. Yeah, that was uh, 
even more bizarre because <clears throat> they take buildings from Springfield and they they built them like Moe's Tavern, <laughs> really the cool. Quickie Mart, and whatever else. Like they the exist. DMV. <laughs> the DMV. They, they're there and they're built to look like the cartoon and it's even more surreal because you are inside of a cartoon at that point yeah that's pretty cool. you know i think they need to do it up a little bit more it, with these kinds of things it's like very often you see that they've executed the individual building because it's relatively easy to do you know most having just a purple thing it says most but they aren't quite able to get the 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 quote unquote street or the walking air is to, to kind of tie into that scene. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. doesn't feel complete. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why, I don't know why that is. Also, it's kind of disappointing when you go inside of Moe's Tavern and they have uh, Duff beer on tap. Ooh, very exciting. How much is a Duff beer? $16 for a plastic oh, wow. cup. Yeah. Okay, won't be wearing <laughs> a Duff beer then. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, the, the great thing about Universal Studios is that when you're waiting in line for a ride, first of all, it's the, the line is not as long as Disneyland because it's, it's not Disneyland. Um, but also they have flat screen TVs, pretty decent ones, yeah. above uh, the, the line every 20 feet, right? Or less than 20. Less than 20. So if you're waiting in line for 40 minutes, you walk by probably like 30 TV screens. Yeah. And they're playing pretty long clips of the uh the franchise you're waiting in line for so like the simpsons you're just basically watching the simpsons so you're not standing in line for 40 minutes having forced conversation with people you're basically just standing and watching tv for 40 minutes and then you get on the ride <laughs> but um i was really surprised how well maintained all of their buildings are like i was looking around and like everything is repainted like touched up nothing looks like it's dirty or bit up or old you know i think they really spend a lot of money doing that even when we do the when we did the bus ride around the studios mm -hmm. like even the buildings there were like all super clean like really well maintained were they yeah for the behind the scenes tour yeah mm, i don't remember that i mean they're not attractive but you know the paint and everything everything was really clean so we did the Simpsons thing, we did the tour, we did Transformers, we did Despicable Wait, Me. What did you think of the Simpson ride, the simulator? S Simpsons ride. I don't even remember it. When, when the doors and the ceiling opens and the car goes up and then you have that like... Oh yeah, right. Uh, right. 180 screen. Right, right. Um, the roller coaster. Uh, I mean, I thought it was an interesting way to get into the amusement quote unquote ride by like going up through this portal. Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty effective. It, it made you very disoriented and you kind of felt like you were actually entering some a new kind of place. Um, the graphics of the screen were pretty poor. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. It's quite old, I guess. A lot of those simulator rides, to, sometimes that made them in 3D and it was really dizzying. For people who have motion sickness problems, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's another, another big difference between Disneyland and Universal is that you know Disneyland has a lot of proper roller coasters like yeah. physical roller coasters, um, whereas Universal Studios the majority of their rides are uh, I don't know what you call it but basically simulator. you're a simulator right so you're sitting in in some kind of in a seat whether that be an individual seat in in a theater that moves or you're in a kind of a pseudo car and that whole car moves or the whole platform moves or whatever so you're looking at a big screen with or without 3D glasses. And those are pretty much the only three variables between uh, every single ride that we went on, except for the one at the very beginning that was an outdoor thing. Yeah, well, they had different rides, we didn't do them. <clears throat> this is true too, but still that's a lot of rides to be basically the same technology. And the funny thing is on their, their uh, what do you call it, theme park map, and it gives you a description of each of the rides. They describe each one as different. Like, I'm using this technology based on that technology. So yeah. when you read it, you think, like, oh, this is going to be different. You get there, and it's like, no, this is the same thing. And that it kind of made everything blur together in a way. Like, you know, because all those rides are, are based with the same technology, more or less. And they have to start and finish within probably like a two to five minute timeline. Maybe probably less than five minutes. So once you get used to seeing that same kind of narrative and that pace and the same screen technology, like again and again and again, it starts to get kind of confusing as to 
what even happened, you know, during during the day. So I don't know. This is the Simpsons one was a was all right. The one that was even more blurry though was when we did the studio tour. The studio tour is is pretty fascinating because you get on a tram, an actual tram. It's not like some fake one, and you go around the lots of Universal Studios, like the actual production studios. So you get to see behind the scenes, kind of. But it's only a portion of all of their yeah. studios, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that that always enjoyed me. It was super cold though that day, yeah. <laughs> freezing my butt. But um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And one of the ones that was particularly nice that I haven't seen last time I went there in 2010 was the Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. When the the, the the bus enters some kind of warehouse oh, and they right. use mm -hmm. I don't know hologram projections yeah. of people within a set. I thought that was pretty fascinating. It used to the the studio tours. Uh, attraction used to be different in that there is much more physical uh use of physical props and, and mechanisms to create events so but, the, that, but that goes along with you know how the movie the making of the movie has evolved well yeah i suppose that's true which is slightly depressing but so the tour itself is not just you drive around and that's it it's a pretty extensive loop and then along it there are attractions you go through and the one that they used to have, which they still might, and maybe just under construction, is a scene from Jaws. So your tram actually goes over a body of water, and then it's it's on a kind of bridge, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the bridge, like fake, breaks, and your tram starts to tilt sideways, and then the shark from Jaws jumps out at the you know at at the tram. Um, <clears throat> and then a long time ago, they used to have another thing where when you're in the tram, you're driving through like this tunnel. And the tunnel uh, was made to look like ice, and then different sections would rotate in different ways, and then there was like some kind of uh, snowman creature or something like that, wow. right? I think there used to be a, um, a a King Kong with banana breath, but there were physical things that would happen around you. But now the two big, two of the three big attractions on that ride were basically just screens again. Um, the first one was a, uh, King Kong versus T Rex, whatever. The, yeah, based on the three D, right? <clears throat> based on Peter Jackson's uh, last movie with King Kong, uh, Skull Island, um, which is impressive because you know, the tram is is pretty long. So that means this you have one screen on your on your left and one on your right. So as far as you can see, you're it's a completely three dimensional experience, right? There's no screen on top, but you can't see on top because you have a roof. So. <clears throat> You put the 3D glasses on, and the idea is that now you are inside the jungle. This, inside the jungle, and so wherever you look, you're seeing like trees and stuff like that. But the 3D was not aligned, and mm. it was really, really difficult to watch. <laughs> uh, difficult to watch? Why? Because the image was blurry. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, oh no, I'm getting car sick. Oh no, no. <laughs> And then, thank God for like the little splash of water. And I was like, oh, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's challenging because uh, I get what they're trying to do. But of course, you're not like one individual in a glass orb from Jurassic Park. You are in a tram surrounded by other people with like the structure of the tram. So really, your vision is, is greatly limited, right? Um, also, they were saying these are the two largest screens like ever in the world or something like that, right? Amazing, 4K tech, you know, resolution. The problem is these screens are so huge that 4K doesn't mean anything because they're so big. That's why it looks blurry. So despite them being quote unquote high res, it's like looking back at a video from like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if you have motion sickness, it's extremely disorienting and crazy loud. It was really loud. Everywhere I was really loud. All all of the the yeah. simulator rides were so loud. Yeah. Like even we do this all the time, so I think I'm going deaf. I had to plug my ears in all of the rides. Yeah. <clears throat> but so the part where you know they show you like oh the city hall of return, uh, back from the future, or yeah. uh, you know like the little downtown of New York streets, and that do they actually use those streets still? You think or yeah. are they? Yeah, oh, they're just they're I mean, that's what they say they use it for, yeah. I mean, they quoted a bunch of movies and TV shows that are used for those things. It's pretty amazing <laughs> that you could do that. Just, you know, build out a few facades, make it look like a place. And mm -hmm. because it's just framed 
a certain way and propped a certain way like it can make you believe that you're actually there that's pretty fascinating what was cool is that the the trams now have uh, tv screens in them right so you will drive through a set that's been used in either one movie or tv show or a bunch of them and then they'll play clips from the movie that it was in and it's kind of weird how when you watch the clip it's totally convincing it's like yeah they're in new york city or they're in this giant field or whatever and in reality it's just a corner on a lot surrounded by all kinds of other crap yeah. you know the, the really impressive one was uh the airplane crash site which was used in steven spielberg's war of the worlds movie starring tom hanks does that sound good <laughs> um <laughs> yeah do you know what I'm <laughs> okay um that was cool because it wasn't some digital screen or whatever. They actually took an airplane to Universal Studios and broke it apart and took cars. So you, you actually get to ride through what was a pretty convincing crash site. When we drove through that, I was on the non-airplane side where they have like leftover of houses and a bunch of junk in the front yard and whatever. And I was looking at the junk that was there and I'm like... Hey, I've been I've I've seen that set, you know, ten years ago or so. The junk is still there. Do you do you think they actually glued it down or nailed it down to the <laughs> ground? So if it's really rainy or really windy, like things doesn't start flying away, you know? I was like, yeah. There is a person who went through, you know, the work of disposing objects a certain way, a certain spot, you know, mathematically probably had a floor plan of each single <laughs> individual pieces i don't know if they had a floor plan no, but, saying, but that would be interesting right that your job is to create a mess you know like it has to look like a convincing mess or convincingly old i'm sure it's really hard when you do sets to recreate something and make it look like it naturally is like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't positioned by yeah, some person yeah yeah the tour thing is a lot of fun the one that was impressive too i think is the desperate housewife streets with yeah. all the houses mm -hmm. i mean okay there is no you know furnished kitchen in it or things like that but still the amount of work to make it believe that it's a, a residential street was pretty impressive i mean basically it's they are actual buildings and there is it's, it's asphalt sidewalk streets it's it's pretty much real maybe there's some things that don't meet code but you know the, those pieces of architecture need to be waterproof to a certain degree if they're going to be used as sets you know they need to withstand earthquakes i would imagine they need to withstand uh, wind and everything else so like even the harry potter thing even though so we were told that most of these crazy structures you know that are really dynamically shaped are made out of high density foam uh like which yeah, you use in buildings like i guess the huh? grinch the grinch the set of the yeah. grinch yeah or even a lot of the other stuff, like the at least according to the tour guide, like anytime you see uh, wood structures, a lot of times that, that are meant to look very dilapidated. It's not wood; it's just foam that's been carved up to look like wood. That's just no, no. <laughs> you didn't hear that part. Oh uh, yeah, I think I probably ignored it. But it's like if they can be that free with those kinds of buildings, can we do more of that in real life? Like I would, you want to make be, buildings out of foam? Are you why crazy? not? They, they, oh, they have foam facades. Absolutely. I don't know how they deal with like fire ratings though. No, it's Where possible. Or like with smoke, you know. It's possible, but I mean, <clears throat> like, who wouldn't want to live in a Gru's house from Despicable Me? It'd be quite interesting, don't you think? Yes, I love, I love Despicable Me. <laughs> when, uh, yeah. When we were in that, we did that ride, and before you enter the room where the ride is, you are in some kind of little vestibules with screens where, you know, they're preparing you for the ride again. Yeah. <laughs> and I think one of the kids or somebody is pressing the button to release, like, the fart gun or something like that. And I was like, oh, my God, I hope they're not going to oh, yeah. release, like, <laughs> a stinky fart smell. <laughs> But no, they really like a little banana smell. That was pretty nice. Banana smell left over from the old uh, uh, King Kong. <laughs> King Kong used to come out on the on the studio tours, and he would yell at you, and then banana breath would come out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of the, the stuff that we saw w was really relied heavily on digital screens, but they, you know, they pushed it pretty far. I would say. The big screens for the attraction itself, big screens that happened around you, like as the you know, the studio tour with King Kong fighting T Rex, and or then the Kung Fu Panda even. And Kung Fu Panda, good. that was a really good example, yeah. 
perhaps you would like to share that with us. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps you want to go and see it yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, Kung Fu Panda uh, was basically um, some kind of screening room, right? A cinema room. Yeah. Uh, but you each are seated on individual seats that are moving, you know, shaking, inclining, and doing all kinds of things to give you the illusion that you're part of the scene that you're watching, right? Uh, but what was really nicely done is that before you enter the projection room, you're in a little lobby vestibule where you actually see some of what looks like wood paneling on the wall disappeared and the characters of Kung Fu Panda start showing up. That was really surprise, uh, surprising and well done. Yeah. At first I thought, are those real people? And then I had to look again and I was like, oh, it's a screen. What? What happened? What happened to the wall? Yeah. It was really disturbing. And then you get in the room and you watch the, the little short movie there. And the room is kind of curved, but yeah. has some columns, like, you know, uh, two like three-dimensional half columns on the sides. And the way they made the movie, the movie would actually interact with the architecture of the room, in a way. Um, they had, like, windows on the side, fake windows looking. They would actually use it within the movie as a window, having the panda jumping through. And things like that that was um they, they did a really good job using projection technology and also actual digital you know, lcd led uh, screens to blur reality yeah. like um for some reason it reminded me of the tiki room in disneyland and you go in and there's there's no digital technology maybe it's different now but when last i was there there's no, there's no digital technology you sit in a room and it's a, it's a show and there's a bunch of robotic basically birds that just sing for half an hour or whatever it is. Um, but so there's a lot of mechanical stuff. And what? Mm -hmm. So when you're in Disneyland or in, in a lot of attractions like that, you know they're mechanical and you you know that it's fake, but you just, that's part of the fun of it, right? But what they did with Kung Fu Panda was like, and a lot of the others, they, they actually used the digital technology to blur things. So like you said, you're waiting in the foyer and it looks like a normal wall or it looks slightly cartoons you're not quite sure and then shit starts moving it's it was really it was really well done it's well done also because they don't reveal all their cards at all of their cards at the yeah, uh, yeah, at, yeah. at once right so yeah. you, everything stages a certain way and like maybe there's one item on the shelf that's kind of moving or whatever it is and then like half of the wall opens up and there's these characters running around okay that's wild and the bottom doors open up and then when you get into the theater everything's contained within the screen you think okay i'm going to basically watch a movie right this is kind of a weird yeah, yeah, yeah. but then they start engaging a little bit of the surroundings and then the entire surroundings and then they combine the, all that digital stuff with physical props it that one was very well orchestrated it was really well done. and like you said the, the fact that basically the, the show starts before you even in the main yeah. room i think was really nice uh, the other <coughs> thing like that was that the harry potter when we're in the castle in line and we go through the room that has all the paintings that moves and talks. Yeah, that was, that was class. This was like really amazing. Um, because it was like in the movie, right? The mm -hmm. paintings were actually moving, but you could try and stand in different spots to see if you could see the screen. Yeah. But the way it was done was that the actual glass of the screen was polished or frosted the same way that the the oiling of a painting would be with, textured, the, yeah. with the brush strokes mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And he was, it was really amazingly done. I, I, I was like, I want one for my home. Like, this is amazing. I think it would only work if you, if it was in a really, really dark room, Probably. you know, sort of getting your reflection, but even being, uh, you know, as, as, as detailed oriented as we are, even when you got to a really steep angle, right. To catch as much reflection as possible. There wasn't no, any. It looked like a fucking painting that yeah. was moving. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. They, yeah, so they did a good job with a few things for sure. And like, um, you know, the again, they use, I guess it would be projection or um, holographics, holograms. On plexiglass. Right? Yeah, to, to have like Dumbledore walking around in the background yeah. or the Harry Potter kids. Um, or uh, the the fat lady that's in the painting that sings, that, you know, mm -hmm. it's how you get into the Gryffindor. Door. Like she's there frozen and you kind of expect her to move because that's what happens in the movie, but she's like completely frozen, right? And then she starts moving. You're like, yeah. oh my God, she's alive. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this, that's what's maybe the best part of Universal Studio is how it brings technology with reality, how yeah. we try to bridge that gap. Um, 
And I mean, I don't know, I would go back again in nine, ten years to see like what's next because it, it was really amazing. Even the dinosaur, like the guy who was doing the dinosaur um, at the, by the Jurassic Park in the street. What are you talking about? The dinosaur mm. that was carrying people off. No, what, what are you talking about? Dinosaur. What did you do <laughs> at the park? <laughs> when we went down to do the Transformer ride, there was a dinosaur. Oh, yeah, dinosaur, that's right, ma'am. <laughs> she just looked at me like I was bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dinosaur, yeah. Yeah, you remember? He's a, a uh-huh. velociraptor. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Well, it was pretty convincing. Okay, thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry, uh, <laughs> I spaced out. <laughs> um, yeah, it or, was super or, convincing, or, yeah. Oh, you know, the one that was funny, too, was the guy who was doing the Transformer. He was being so mean to the people who wanted to take picture with him. There was a, a lot of Asians, like couples and friends, who wanted to take picture in front of the giant transformer, and they got, and they kept doing like the peace sign. And it was like no peace sign. Why did I just say no peace sign? Take that down. <laughs> <laughs> he was just yelling at people the whole time. That was pretty funny. Yeah, those were well done. The Velociraptor was. Well, then enough to, I couldn't tell if it was a person or a, a robot for the a while. The eyes were moving and the yeah. mouth was opening. It was, I think it was a person, but it was pretty it was sophisticated. Hybrid. Yeah, it was hybrid. Yeah. yeah, they did a good job of, of hybridizing things and, and using different types of technology. I bet that the Star Wars part of Disneyland is going to be bananas when it opens. I I would bet they're going to use a lot of new technologies, you know, digital ones and mechanics and whatever. To, to start to, again, create a virtu- uh, uh, an augmented reality that you're inhabiting, like well, Universal I does. <laughs> if they don't, I mean, that would be stupid. <laughs> no, don't you think? Uh, yeah, it would, it would be a waste, especially because we're talking about Star Wars. Right. <clears throat> I was kind of bummed that the Jurassic Park ride was uh, closed. I think they were just revamping it. I don't think they closed it. I think it. they were. Yeah. I think they were. But, you know. Dinosaur, so always good. No, 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 no. What did you think of um, Waterworld? I think I saw it the first time I went, but my memory is not very good, so I don't really remember it. Um, it was pretty cool. Again, it was so cold that day that I just felt so much pain for these actors going in and out of the water with their boots and jeans and long hair, no sleeves. I was like, these people are going to be sick tomorrow. Like, what are we doing? (laughs) Um, I thought it was pretty good. The space was pretty filled up, which was pretty amazing. Uh, The guy opening uh, the act was pretty entertaining. Um, And the action, the action was there. I would say that maybe I would have liked the actors to have different types of costumes so I could see them. Yeah, it was kind of tough to see. It was very, they were merging with the decor so much. And since there was a few of them in very different spots in and out of the stage, it was kind of hard to keep track of where they were. That's a common thing I I, I see with uh, these kinds of shows or even uh, performances and live performances in theaters. Like people wear stuff and they blend with the background. I'm like, what? Like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I get the, the idea of the color palettes yeah. and the universe that you're trying to create. It's fine, but maybe tone down one of them so, you know, they can like, contrast a bit more. Had you seen the movie Waterworld? Sorry, Kevin Costner came out, uh, ooh, I 90s or early too. 2000s, post-apocalyptic. You know, there's no more land because the sun, global warming, all the icebergs melted, everything's underwater, water world. Um, he's like fish man, he has gills, you know what I mean? I don't remember. Someone tries to steal his lemons and he gets upset, you know, like stealing my lemons. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I think the lemon scene is like two seconds at the beginning of the movie, I don't think it's very important. It's the only thing I remember though, is just lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my lemons. I need my lemons. But I was pretty impressed by uh, when the guy shows up with the guy, the two guys shows up with the jet skis and start like you know doing like things around because there was really no room. Mm. I was like, this is a baby pool of water there, and they were like doing a big splash and big turns, and and I was like, oh, you better be precise because otherwise you're just gonna end up in that pillow audience. over there, or <laughs> audience, you know. Um, Part of me always. Well, not only wonders, but kind of wishes like something bad would happen just to make it more exciting, <laughs> you know? Like actually the one guy who, who did like a 45 foot or 50 foot drop into the water, which is pretty fucking far, he was 
close to one of the okay. props floating in the water. And it wasn't like an inflatable, it was like a fake, I don't know, canoe or, or whatever. It wasn't a canoe, whatever, a dinghy. He was within less than a foot. Less than a foot. Yeah, I know. The, the dialogues were a little simple, well, the um, but I guess, you know, it's, I mean, it's amazing that you could do dialogue <clears throat> while running around and jumping and doing all that kind of stuff, right? It was a little bit odd because, uh, so the, the story is, is this girl gets captured and then Fishman, you know, whoever, whatever stunt guy who portrays um, Kevin Costner in this theater piece, he comes in on a water jet and saves the girl, right? That's basically what happens. And there's an evil guy who's a shaved head and eye patch and smokes cigars and, and he's like, whatever, right? He was funny. But so when she gets captured and he and the bald guy is there, he has like a, a sawn off shotgun or something, right? And they first approached each other and they're, they're facing each other. And she comes out of the water and, you know, everyone's wet. So there's a, a little bit of sexual element to all of it. She's like wet. She has to pull down her like dress thing because it's like bunched up. And then the music cues, it's like, no, 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 no. Like, what? What's about to happen right now? Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know and she this. was like walking very sexual toward him. And like, I'm not quite sure what those few seconds were improvised. I don't, I don't know. You didn't see that. You didn't no, recognize that. I didn't that. pay attention, to, no, it. I didn't really pay attention to the girl. I was just like, she's going to be sick tomorrow. She has no sleeves on. Her, she was. She showed up with her hair wet. I'm like, she's probably wet from like the previous show she just did. How is this any safe? I mean, you know, like, this is not good. <laughs> but the fish man, I was very confused because I was expecting to see an actor who would show up and somehow look like a fish. <laughs> or a fish mermaid man or something. Like scales or like gold or <laughs> something. Like it comes from I'm the here. sea. And Grab I just, the gun. I, I can't. I can't. I only have flippers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but and then I just see like this California surfer dude yeah. showing up on a jet ski, and I was like, "Oh, wait a minute, this is Fishman? What? What?" <laughs> He's a little contemporary. Yeah, he looked like a surfer dude. He kind of had like too much of like that big swag, you know. And also, he didn't have any dialogue, which I don't know if that's the way it is in the movie him, or whatever. Yeah. But he says nothing, and he. He does have that that Southern California like Malibu, yeah, Malibu like vibe, and so he looks kind of stupid. Yeah. Did you get that feeling? Yeah. He looks like a like an idiot. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, what am I doing here? And saving someone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not it's quite sure. Like, well, girl, you could have picked up a smaller boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, they need to find someone that was not so uh, smooth. I mean, it was you know? good though, the uh, acrobatic stuff, but the acting part, I wasn't so sure. But you know, what was that kind of freaked me out was when the airplane came out of nowhere. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? And then yeah. it just like landed in the water. It like basically flew over, landed in the water. And I looked and I looked and I couldn't see any cables or anything. Nope. And I was like. Okay, how in earth did they ever do that? And how can you be sure that the the plane is not going to just land on like the kids that were sitting across? <laughs> that would have been exciting, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not like there was a giant magnet or something that would catch it. So mm. I was, yeah, I, didn't I, see I, was cables. I was impressed and at the same time very scared. I was like, okay, what is next? What is going to come out of where next? <laughs> I need to be yeah, that's a, that was. That's the great finale because they talk about <clears throat> the guy says you shot down my airplane and they're like okay so now we're gonna see some fake ass airplane like you know come in slowly in the water through the gates but no this fucking thing launches over the set and the set again at its highest point it's probably like 60 feet tall launches yeah. over the set lands in the water and then stops just short of you know the fence basically where the audience is it's I'm wondering when they're going to replace that, though, because like Water World's pretty dated at, at this point. That's true. I mean, if it's an old movie, that probably doesn't make any reference to the kids that go there. Like, no one under the age of, well, I guess it's not that old, <laughs> but like half the audience, they don't even know what this show is about, right? Yeah. Water World. Yeah. They don't even know who Kevin Costner is, probably. Oh, yeah, they don't. But it'd be interesting to see if in Disneyland or even in Universal, if they can use these kinds of technologies and blend them with an actual roller coaster. You know what I mean? Oh. C c <laughs> too much. Oh. Well, but then maybe, the whole time. <laughs> maybe just turn down the volume. 
and and maybe not use water as a feature in every single ride in universal studios it's I like, like it, put on these goggles sit in a chair and it moves around and then you're gonna get hit in the face with water i kind of like it though <laughs> like fuck fuck stop. <laughs> i kind of liked it because it wasn't a lot it was just like a very few drops and i'm like how do they make sure that every single one of us is getting like just a couple drops you know i don't know they have a bunch of <laughs> Kid. Okay, great. But even the Kung Fu Panda one, where you're sitting in the audience and you're in individual seats, I was kind of expecting like this is going to be stupid because when you're you've when never you're, done one of those before. No, no, I've only done the ones where you're in a a vehicle of like four seats and the whole thing moves, right? And that's oh. kind of cool because you're with other people. But you think that if you're because then that means that the the entire structure that's supporting you is moving around, right? But you would think that you're sitting in a theater and your seat moves. So the floor doesn't move. And you would think it'd be kind of stupid that you'd just be kind of like vibrating your butt or something. But actually, it worked pretty well. I've done one before when I was a, a kid. When I was a kid, um, there was a, a theme park in France called the Futuroscope. The Fu okay. Futuroscope. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like future. I mean, at the time, you know, I was 10. Now it's probably old unless they updated it. But it was like about like future technology, sensorial stuff and whatever. And one of the attractions was you were watching a movie in one of those seats. And the movie, I think, had some like kids skating mm -hmm. around. Um, like uh, skating, uh, but like the boards. Skateboard? Skateboard. Okay. Skateboarding around. And I remember, I will always remember one of the scenes, the kid just lay down on his skateboard and goes under a truck. And as he does that, the seat you're sitting in is like shaking, <laughs> like you are the one on the board going under the truck. And that was super effective. I was like, whoa, it's like if I just did it. You Wait, know? how old were you when this happened? Uh, 10, 10 oh. or 12 or something. <laughs> Be, yeah, I wonder... So a lot of the the kind of motion seat ride things, you know, the the fixed fixed seat, what are they called? I don't know. Simulators. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, a lot of the simulator rides were actually kind of jolty. <clears throat> you mean rough? Rough because they can't. They're not moving around, so you don't get you don't get the sensation that you would from an actual roller coaster. So some of them rely on just like to make you feel like you're doing something, <laughs> but it. it just kind of just uncomfortable, you know? It just feels like someone's shaking your seat really hard. When it's like a little brutal, it doesn't particularly feel good. What was very impressive and well done is the it, when they give you the illusion of speed. Right. You know, and like you said, they're tilting you backward, mm -hmm. putting some wind in and kind of like make it shake a little bit. And you really, feel, you really have the feeling that you are going at a certain speed. Well, in fact, you're absolutely not moving <laughs> a mile. <laughs> but it, it's... It must be super fun to work on those uh, attractions because you basically have to recreate experiences and feelings and universe mm. different ways than people actually are used to perceive them. You know, yeah. like you you have to you have to recreate the feeling by by uh, have by creating an illusion of the feeling. Right. You know. Right. That's, right, right. That's pretty. Um, you know, that's pretty difficult. I'm sure. I mean, it's kind of. The thing is, because they relied so heavily on those few different kinds of technology, they kind of exhausted it, which makes it fascinating because you see the limits of it and they, they, they really push it as far as it could go. But at the, at the, again, at the end of the day, when you do the same thing over and over and over again, it gets kind of All exhausting. Right, we get it, we get it. <clears throat> what? Such a downer. We get that you prefer uh, the Disney. It's no, 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 I, I liked it. I personally really like the simulator because I'm not... I have like you know I have body problems and you'd be fine at Disneyland and roller coasters first is not my thing physically not not good so the simulator give me the sensation without you know taking any risk of enjoying myself or anything so I like it. Now, this Disneyland you wouldn't have a pro problem with like Six Flags would be an issue but Disneyland again it's most it's basically it's on for kids you know what I mean it's it's not um, you said that like if you know exactly. Uh, how my body works you don't but i know so. disneyland very well <laughs> yeah i was actually uh, very shocked that a lot of the rides we did had like really little kids like mm -hmm. the harry potter ride we did in the school mm -hmm. i mean Ho it, it, was, it wasn't in the castle okay oh. in the harry potter school okay. the wizardy school 
um i mean it was it was it was good it was shaking enough it was like nothing crazy but it was definitely a good shake and a lot of the kids that did the rides were pretty small and i was like okay i got some good you know some good feelings when i did it how did that kid survive that like you know didn't your uh whoever would say the people came off the ride crying <laughs> There was kids who came out of there crying. Yeah. It was interesting because we tried to do it the first time. And mm. I asked the guy who was working there, you know, like, how intense is your traction? Because I have back problems. I can do, you know, two intense things. He was like, oh, it's pretty crazy. You know, it goes like up and down and like shakes like that. It's like an arm that's articulated. I was like, oh, I just, you know, just wait for my family on the side. Like, no problem. So I was waiting on the side with my same nephew who is not into that kind of stuff. And I, we would see people coming out of the seats after the ride. And I was trying to gauge the, their emotions after their experience to see if the guy kind of exaggerated or if it was true. And the parents were kind of like, oh, oh my God, I'm relieved. You know, it's, it's over. Like, it was like quite something. Really? And a lot of the kids were just emotionless. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like this is what I was, this is weird. Like that doesn't make any sense. And it wasn't as intense. I ended up doing it before we left, and it wasn't as intense as the guy said. No, um, no. But if you tell any of those people that you have back problems, they are going to tell you not to get on the ride. If you tell them I have back problems, and and you're asking them asking them about the, it's a small world after all, they're going to give you some kind of warning. Well, you know, you're going to be seated down on hard plastic for about twenty minutes, so you probably shouldn't do it. That's, that's well, I mean, in, in, in total fairness, they also don't know what kind of problems I have. So that's you exactly know, it. That, just covering their asses, but. Uh, the thing I would probably do is just ask someone who just finished the ride how that was. That would probably be more true of a statement than like what the staff would say. Yeah, that makes sense. The Harry Potter one was pretty good. I mean, they used a lot of screens, but like it was a hybrid between, uh, you know, screen stuff, physical props, and uh, well, that's pretty much the only two things I suppose. Yeah, but I, and, I had my eyes closed for the majority of it. Uh, why? They were spiders. Close my eyes. You had your eyes closed? As soon as I saw anything that was remotely close to a spider, eyes closed. Oh my God, you're such a party and I, pooper. And then I would open my eyes just like a very little bit. Anything that looked like a spider, close my eyes. They're fake spiders. They were like that big. Have you seen spiders that are That's that big? That's why it's so fucking so scary to see a spider that is that big. That's why my eyes are closed. It's like a they have, they have a bunch of eyeballs and the eyeballs are shiny and they're furry. Fuck no. Hell it's no. It's made of like, papier mache or why not? <laughs> what? Paper mache? I don't think so. Um, you don't know. One no, of those things could good, be living. But, but it was pretty good. So you were like sitting in the kind of like this shell seat, right? That kind of wraps mm -hmm. you all the way around and you have people next to each other, but you're divided. You don't really see each other. And then they have this bar that you can hang on to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hang on the thing like <laughs> from beginning to end. I was like, because I never really trust the seats. I'm like, what if the thing is not locked? Yeah. What if I slide off? Like, I don't want to die on the theme park. That's just stupid. <laughs> Especially if the ride wasn't good, like, you know, like, no. How did she so, die? A Dementor got her. <laughs> Spider. Did you just, what was that? It's a trash can. Okay. So I hang on to the thing and I was kind of trying to lean to see my nephew's face when he was doing yeah. it and see if you could see you. And when I did that, I kind of saw the machinery that was holding the seats we were in. We were pretty damn high. Really? We were like at least, I don't know, 10 feet in the air. And that was like a big, that was a big arm moving. Like when the guy was describing it to me the first time, he was actually describing the machinery, not what you see, but like the actual thing. Right. You know? And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to say my bubble, <laughs> not look, because basically it's like a giant arm that, you know, like, yeah, like moves you around mm. like this. Sometimes it's better not to know how things are done. <laughs> I mean, if I recall correctly, Space Mountain at Disneyland, I think... Oh my God, Space Mountain, what, what a downer. What are you talking, okay, again, you have not been to the actual Disneyland, so. I've done Space Mountain, and you know, Space the, Mountain, the every time I would go to Space Mountain, to Walt Disney with my parents as a kid for our vacation, every year I would try to make it to Space Mountain, and I was too short, too short, too short, <laughs> too short. And I really, the, the, really, really, really wanted to do it. And isn't the restriction like something like two foot six? It's something no, really short. It's like, uh, uh, this? Three foot. Well, you know, it took me some time to grow up, and okay. then I grew up too fast. But every year I would check, I would check, and one year finally I was the correct height to go in. So my dad's like, "Okay, let's you know, let's go." So the two of us went and did it. I think by then I was probably too old mentally, <laughs> and it was just a disappointment. I was like, 
oh well i waited all these years for that ride wasn't impressive at we've all we've got to go to the anaheim disneyland i don't know when because it's it's like 120 dollars to go to one one of the parks it's, it's madness it's madness i'm gonna have to take a summer job there just to get a cheaper ticket <laughs> you'd have to work there for a long time before it got any discounts right yeah no, you can't just work it as a summer because they get a lot of high school kids who work during the summer. They don't get any. You don't get any. I'm not high school. I have experience. No. <laughs> <laughs> what else with Universal? I don't remember. It was a short day. Ten to six. A short day. I mean, it was pretty eight hours. It was pretty pretty busy. No, it was busy. But I mean, like when you go to you go to other theme parks, Disneyland. It's like eight and o'clock until four, like one o'clock in the morning. Four hours drive total on that day, so it was Ugh. actually a pretty good day. Ugh, L.A. traffic unbearable but so they have their own city universal mm -hmm. city i guess so yeah does that encompasses like stuff outside of their universal studio stuff i would imagine i don't know like housing shops the streets like like real life stuff or well it, uh, when they say city it's just a legal jurisdiction you know you know what i mean no. Not, not to do with land use necessarily. Oh, I don't know if there's a requirement for a city to have X percentages of different land uses. Well, there is Studio City. No, they're not talking about Studio. Uh, is it Studio City? I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh, hmm. We should look at Google, but not now. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's because there is other movie studio in that <clears throat> vicinity that they call it Studio City and that just encompasses everything. Did you see any celebrities when we were in the back? Uh, and you know, doing the <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the tram tour. No, did you see any? No. Nope. Are we, were we supposed to? I don't know. I feel like you go on that ride hoping you'd see some kind of like minor celebrity. I wanted to go in one of those big warehouses when they had like stuff happening. I wanted to see like real stuff. That's kind it's of pretty, what I wish with yeah. that bus tour is that you know, maybe they have a a portion of the warehouse where the bus could go through and you could actually see them working on something, you know, like that would be amazing. Or at least see a set that, uh, and they couldn't do it when they're working. I mean, you do see sets that just, they, have, they happen to be kind of old, which, you But know. you see exterior sets. Yeah, Like it would be interesting to ones. see like how you create, you know, desperate yeah. housewives, but the interior of the yeah. house that's not in the house. Like, yeah, that would you be know, interesting That to would see. be really cool. I guess it's because they those get recycled much more often, right? But it's pretty amazing that all of these films and TV uh, films and TV shows, you know, are recorded. They said like eighty percent or ninety percent of the footage is indoor in, box, in these yeah, bo yeah. giant boxes that are ninety nine point nine percent soundproof. That's pretty strange, right? If you're like Jurassic Park was recorded was shot in one of those, I was like, what? yeah, <laughs> that your and your job is to go in, like. If you work at an office, you enter an office building and you're inside an office with an office desk, an office computer, an office chair. Like, it's all office. It makes sense. You go to a school, there's a gate with a security guard, there's a campus, you walk through back past some trees, you go to a classroom with a... It's like, it all makes sense. But if you're an actor, you basically drive to the, this parking lot that doesn't look very glorious at all, right? This kind of crappy parking lot. Uh, this giant gray building that says, like, studio number 47... And then you go inside and you're in a completely fake thing that is, you know, probably a lot smaller than it feels like on TV. So it's this tiny thing. And like, that's your job. That's really strange. And there is really no strange. daylight, no airflow. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> really weird. No plants. <laughs> no plants. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's bizarre. Mm, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, right? The only other thing that happened was you had to pay 25 bucks for parking, which is outrageous. And they ask you, you want to pay an extra $10 for a total of $35 to park in the, uh, what do they call it? Priority, whatever, special parking. You can be closer. Preferred, preferred. preferred parking. You can be closer to the entry of the theme park. No, we were going to do the $25 route and that'll be it. Which actually ended up being as far as the non-preferred one. <laughs> it was like a five minute walk. Ridiculous. And actually, it was a pleasant walk. You got to go buy a bunch of neon storefronts and stuff like that. More consumerism. Very must must consume things with my mouth, my eyes, my nose, and my skin. You know, splash water on me. Just give it to me. Splash more. me more water. I like <laughs> more. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the other thing about um, going on a series of rides that are, you know, basically screens is you feel like you're going to see a bunch of movies in a day. That's you know? what's weird is that the they are actually mini movies. 
Yeah. And the action in the story is like you're watching a movie. There's no intro. There is no outro. It's just like bam. This is the action. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Over. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you're kind of like, oh, what just <laughs> happened? You know, it's super intense. And then you into the next one. Welcome to the Simpsons. Wow. Let's go on this ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the next one again. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's why we had to have coffee in the middle of the day. That was the best coffee ever. Coffee with sugar. And there was like six Starbucks in the theme park. Really? No, there was like maybe three, yeah, but it felt more. like six. No, no, no. There, there was multiples. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. see that. Got to stay caffeinated. All right. Are we we're good now? All right, cool.